Hey everyone, welcome to Rising Tides. My name is Christo, I'm the Artistic Director and Co-Founder of Eureka Ensemble. Eureka's mission is to nurture social impact through music. We identify an issue facing our community, partner with civic and social organizations, and then come together to use music to address that issue. Tonight is a call to humility and action. By highlighting the local impact of climate change through the voices of young artists in the city and empowering them to become change makers in their communities. In just a bit, you will meet our 2021 Rising Tides Fellows, Aaron Vidala, Travis Ambroise, Daniel Rivera, and Angelina Botticelli. Each fellow was paired with a climate expert or environmentor from the School for the Environment at UMass Boston. And over the course of the spring, our fellows and mentors met to produce original works telling the story of the impact of climate change in their communities. We are deeply grateful to the School for the Environment for making this project possible. And we'd also like to thank the City of Cambridge, the Cambridge Arts Council, and the Massachusetts Cultural Council for their support of tonight's event. Enjoy. The tides are rising as temperatures rise. Glaciers and ice sheets are melting, pouring water into the oceans. The heat itself energizes these molecules, and the ocean expands as it warms. The tides are rising, and the rate is accelerating. Look out your window. There is work to be done.
We have always lived near water. The vast majority of the planet's people still live near water, including over 125 million people in the coasts of the U.S. Water makes life possible, but climate change threatens to turn it against us. Floods are more frequent today than they were just 50 years ago. More and more extreme storms like Hurricane Sandy are becoming the norm. Our first Rising Tides fellow, Travis Ambrose, focuses on the hypothetical survivor of such a storm in his original song, Waste Deep in My Sins. My name is Travis Ambrose, and I currently live in West Quincy. The name of the song is called Waste Deep in My Sins, and it is me telling the fictional story of a man who is surviving after the quote unquote perfect storm that could be happening in the near future. Um, this character didn't necessarily care about climate change, about the rising um, ocean levels up until this storm happened and it affected everything in his life. He, he was very, you know, laissez-faire about the entire thing, littering, overconsumption of water, didn't really think of doing anything possibly green at all up until that point. And for the side of him um, after the storm, I'm pulling from a bunch of different stories from like Hurricane Sandy survivors and things. And then also like adding a sort of twist to it to adapt it to this character. Working with Helen was really one of those things that made me feel very professional. We did a lot of really fun things that made me feel like I was back in school as well, such as like we did simultaneous searching and we um, did a lot of reading. It just overall was a, a great experience working with her. My message to people in the community about climate change are to A, keep up hope, B, don't forget about these things at all. It, it may be hard to, but try not to. At least, you know, try and make it a habit to do things that are conscious to that in your daily life. And see, when it comes to artists in our community, there are a lot of things on our plate that we have to bring attention to. We kind of just have to see what rings with you and I really hope that this is one of those things that rings with you because there's not a lot of artists out there that are covering this exact topic, especially not in music. I hope you guys enjoy my piece, of course. Um, I worked really hard on it and it definitely uses the chord progression that I wanted to use for a very long time. And I just felt like this was the perfect opportunity. to clean up this mess i wasn't stressed until it was too late and it all came too fast thunder rain and lightning danger water rising all i got left is myself and my need for the survival is dwindling yeah roads turn to rivers waist deep in my own sins can deliver heart froze over in the winter i'm a shiver crisis in the city that i love praying to the helicopters up above Rose turn to rivers, waist deep in my own sins can deliver. Heart froze over in the winter, I'm a shiver. 
crisis in the city I love bringing the helicopters up above In truth, this desolation need not be As long as I do not go quietly and help others speak My home won't be an ocean I can abide by a new oath to give this situation Hope by educating the youth We are below water levels As you can see on Morrissey on a rainy night A hundred feet higher by 2070 We must be ready Lifting aquariums and beaches is interesting But we need to invest in dropping temperatures We are not alone on the coasts. We are not alone on this planet. Our actions run the danger of driving other species to extinction, something we've already done to many. Their existence keeps the planet healthy, which keeps us healthy. The following two pieces by Whitney George and Andres Ballesteros look back on two species that are no longer with us the Reunion Ibis, and the Pyrenean Ibex. We share them today in the hopes that this list soon stops growing longer.
My name is Erin Vidala, and I go to Berkeley College of Music, which is in the Back Bay area, but I live in Roslindale. This process has been really special for me. Um, I feel like I've learned a lot from my mentor, Georgia Mavramati, and it really helped me create a song that I feel proud of. Um, I learned a lot about climate change from her, but more importantly, the emotional discussion about what it means to be afraid as a young person when climate change is so scary. She gave the metaphor of a car crash and that even if you know you're going to get into a car crash, you still hit the brakes to make the accident not as bad as it would have been. And that helped me understand that hope is still possible in a bleak situation. And that's what I tried to communicate in my song. Seasonal Fears is the name, and it's about our fears about climate change and how they can actually inspire us to, to fight. So one of the lyrics in the song is, The river underneath my house won't take us away When it floods, we'll just be left here to pick up the pieces. And that to me is the essence of the song that we're still going to be here after our houses flood, after Boston has changed. And so 
we have to do everything we can to fight and that's inspiring to me. My hope when people hear the song that I wrote is that they might be driven to engage in movements that are that are talking about structural change. And I don't say that very articulately and specifically in the lyrics of the song. So allow this sentence right now to be a part of that message saying, you know, this is structural. And I think that the more we understand that and talk about coming together to fight that structure, the better chance we have. This is a collective issue that we're facing and it's in an intersectional issue. We have to think about racism, we have to think about class and the disparities. Obviously climate change is going to affect the richest and most privileged people last and we have to be thinking about our communities and 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 fighting for our communities as as people who can who can work together and create collective action against oppressive forces. Um, and that art is really powerful in that because it brings people together. It expresses emotions that, that are complex as these issues are. And bringing people together is, is one of the most important things when what we're facing is as significant as as it is. Seasonal fears, just a piece of people's nature allows us to
just be left here to pick up the pieces. Rising Tide's fellow Erin Vidala reminded us in her original song, Seasonal Fears, that even when we are afraid, we can act. Even when we don't know what the future holds, we can still work together to save our waters, our communities, and our forests. Forests are homes to a vast number of species, and they are among our best defenses against rising emissions. Yet, deforestation continues to be an issue. Vorjak's cypresses were originally written as love songs, describing nature in full glory. Let us listen to their celebration of the forests of our world.
Some believe that perhaps we are too far gone, that in the face of climate change, humanity's future lies on other planets. But what could these other worlds look like? Composer Sam Wu writes of his piece, Alien Forests. Depending on the spectra of their local stars, exoplanets flora may come in wildly different colors than our own. Red, purple, blue, or even black.
As we change our planet, we might dream of other worlds. The impacts of warmer temperatures, urban heat islands, air and water pollution, and rising tides will only amplify other issues like poverty and racism. In the face of this, can we hope? Yes, if we care for the world that we still have. Even here in Boston, there are many success stories, from the cleaning of the harbor, to the preservation of Belle Isle Marsh, to the rethinking of single-use plastics. Yes, there is certainly hope, but hope requires action. Action requires acknowledgement, and acknowledgement requires honesty. Rising Tides fellows Danny Rivera and Angelina Botticelli share their thoughts on responsibility and how we can come together for a better future in their original songs, Mess That I Made and Consciousness Rising. My name is Danny Rivera. I am a resident of Mattapan in the city of Boston, but attend school in Cambridge, the Laundry School of Bard College. The song that I wrote called Mess That I Made really highlights this uh, uh, relationship between the human and the human experience and the earth and uh, how at times we as humans can be in this constant state of um, denial to the fact that we have not been good stewards over what mother nature has uh, availed to us. Um, and so there are a number of questions that are um, posed or asked throughout the song um, coming from uh, the humans, uh, the politicians, the pastors, the leaders, the teachers, the educators, all of the, all of the people in society um, asking kind of ourselves, but also the earth, is it time for us to move in the right direction? Um, and that's part of that denial that uh, we must combat. I often find myself asking the same questions and uh, in this time of reckoning, and, and really meditation and, and remembrance uh, in a number of, of different areas of our society. It's equally just as important for us to ask ourselves these questions and to really not just ask the question, but come up with an answer. So there's not an answer at the end of the song. That's for us to do in our own uh, time as we reflect on, on the questions. Um, and so it was great uh, to be able to have a little uh, mini master class with Michael um, and really to learn about all of the work that Michael and the rest of the team at UMass are, are doing to not just tackle, uh, you know, climate change and uh, uh, the climate crisis on a national level or international level, but even on a local level. Uh, what an awakening it was to be able to understand the full depth of this impact um, in our local neighborhood. So I think that was something that was really meaningful to me um, and has really influenced even, you know, the decisions that I choose to make um, with even putting certain things in the right places or, you know, putting a can in the recycling bin rather than in the garbage can or, you know, telling someone else, telling my neighbor or community member, don't litter, right? Like even those small things I, I'm realizing are making a difference and change in community because I see the impact that this is happening, this is having um, even amongst, even amongst, you know, the people closest to me. You know, Nina Simone says it best that it is the artist's duty to reflect the times in which we live. And so what a better opportunity than for us to gather under uh, these circumstances and on, under this, you know, atmosphere of creativity and knowledge uh, to really understand the full depth of this impact and what we have the possibility to do as a community to take care of the earth and to take care of one another. Um, so, so much gratitude and appreciation to the UMass Boston School of the Environment, the City of Cambridge and the Cambridge Arts Council, as well as the Mass Cultural Council for being committed to the work um, of art and, and impact and the everyday uh, uh, shenanigans of what that looks like, right? We know that it's been a process to get to this point, but in so many ways it was worth it. So thank you for your support um, and to uh, uh, 
rising tides and everyone on the team for really uh, sticking this through and, and supporting me as well as the other artists um, throughout this whole process. It's worth it. And uh, I'm super excited for the impact that this will have um, in our community. Tell me when to lose my grip when it's almost done. Find me in my innocence, find me in the dust. Is it okay? Is it okay? Is it okay? Is it okay enough? Am I willing to give up? No, I'm not willing. So dealing with the mess. Clean it up the mess I made Let me know when it's done, when it's safe Is it worth enough to measure up? As climate change exacerbates the effects of pollution, we are at a crucial time in the ministry. The decisions we make now will determine whether or not our children will be able to breathe into the future. If we want to honor God's creation, if we want to save our species, we must change. We've had 30 years of pep talking and selling positive ideas. And I'm sorry, but it doesn't work. Because if it would have, the emissions would have gone down by now. And yes, we do need hope. Of course we do. But the one thing we need more than hope is action. Once we start to act, hope is everywhere. So instead of looking for hope, look for action. Then, and only then, hope will come. My name is Angelina Botticelli, and I live in East Boston, Massachusetts. My song is called Consciousness Rising, and it's really about regaining our awareness of where we come from, which is the earth, and what the earth is going to be right now, specifically relating to East Boston and how we're uniquely impacted by climate change and the rising sea levels. Being an urban coastal community, um, I live right by the beach and in my second line of my song, I literally say like so close I'm walking to the beach because I live right next to it. So I just started to really understand throughout this process of writing what's going on and how I can communicate that through a song. Working with Bob Chen, a fantastic UMass professor, an amazing urban oceanographer, all around fantastic environmentalist, truly made this project what it ultimately ended up becoming. Just completely broke down any of the barriers I had put up around letting myself be vulnerable enough as a citizen to learn about these issues and he made them more approachable for me and he just helped me really get a deeper understanding on specifically what's going on in east boston and also how i'm impacted just by living on the boston harbor because all of boston is connected through the boston harbor um and him he's in such a unique position at umass he knows so much about it being right on the water 
that he was able to share a lot of information with me um, about literally what's happening in the water and how the water is rising. And he's the one that told me about something that I mentioned in my song, which is that East Boston used to be five islands and now we're all connected as one because of landfill. So over the course of about 200 years, landfill filled the ocean, expanded the shorelines. And I saw a map and my house is actually on original land from like the 1600s, but not too far away from me. And in most of the places I grew up, it's landfill. So we're the first to flood. It's the most vulnerable with sea level rise because when the landfill fills, it only went up to the shoreline. So it didn't account for the rising tides to be coming in and how high they're expected to rise with climate change. And you'll notice in the intro to Consciousness Rising is an amazing voice memo that I was able to capture through another incredible conversation I had with the executive director of a local organization in East Boston called the Harbor Keepers. Their mission is to build community coastal resiliency um, and to raise awareness and to raise consciousness on how East Boston and also Chelsea are impacted by the rising tides and climate change um, as an urban coastal community. So the voice that you hear is the fabulous Magdalena Ayad, and she has just completely opened people's eyes that live along the Boston Harbor in East Boston on why it's important to have a vested interest in the health of our planet and how that impacts the amazing views and ocean we're able to enjoy every day. Art in all different ways can be a powerful, powerful vessel to send these incredibly important messages. We all feel so much about these, what's going on in our world in different ways, the layers to that. Channel that through creativity because it will open the door to your heart and your spirit will speak. We are being impacted by the changing climate. You know, we're seeing more flooding. The water is encroaching a little bit farther. You know, intense rainstorms are clogging up our drains more and more, where there are roads that are becoming impassable. Lack of resiliency is it's creating sort of a, um, a chain reaction of vulnerabilities. right by the sea so close i'm walking to the beach collectively we are five islands that once was separated at sea but then the shore became a street and people built to meet their needs society's own expectations disregard earth's ability for so long we've been living this way safe every day Used to the way things are the same, but it's not staying that way. Climate has changed, it's making waves, there's so much at stake, but don't be afraid. I meet you on the new green way. Okay. We can talk for hours till the, the sun sets, Worried about what's on the horizon, and the water is rising, oh, but it'll be okay. As long as we're realistic, that always okay. rising and our relationship with the ocean uh, therefore has to change. More heat in the air, water expands, means waves crashing in higher than we can withstand. Unless we plan, protect our land, best as we can. We need to save our future, save our home. Love in the earth really feeds your for so long we've been living this way, safe every day. Used to the way things are the same, but it's not staying that way. Climate has changed, it's making waves, there's so much at stake. But don't be afraid, I'll meet you on the new green way. Okay. We can talk for hours till the sun sets back. Worried about what's on the horizon, the water is rising. Oh, but it'll be okay, as long as we're 
Humanity has a huge impact on the planet, but the Earth is not ours. We are the Earth's, and we have a responsibility to treat the planet as such. That responsibility starts and ends with us. Jane Goodall reminds us that we cannot get through a single day without having an impact on the world around us. What you do makes a difference, and you have to decide what kind of a difference you want to make. The tide is rising, but so are we.
Hey everybody, I hope you've enjoyed this program. As artists, we have an obligation to tell the story of how our communities can come together and face all obstacles. And as members of the community, each individual carries the responsibility to be an environmental steward, to protect our home and make sure that everyone, especially the most vulnerable among us, as well as all of life can prosper. A rising tide raises all boats and what we face, we will face together as long as we help each other. So we need your help. If you have a moment, please make a gift to Eureka Ensemble by clicking donate on the button below if you're tuning in from the website or visit www.eurekaensemble.org slash give to make an online gift. Your support makes programs like this possible. Thank you.